One morning, as Emily was getting ready for school, she casually mentioned something that would soon send her family's lives into turmoil. Daddy, she said, her eyes wise with excitement. I see mommy at school every day, John paused, his heart skipping a beat at the mention of his late wife. Who, sweetheart, he asked, his voice trembling. Emily beamed. I mean, I see her, daddy. She's always there, watching over me in the schoolyard during recess. John fell silent for a moment, but then he took a deep breath and gave Emily a hug. You know that's not possible, sweetie. Mommy is not here anymore, remember he told her with a gentle tone, not wanting to upset her, but she wouldn't hear it. You don't have to believe me, daddy, but I know it's her. He felt the tears prickling in his eyes as he sighed, but in the end, he just told his daughter, okay, darling, if you say so. But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. It had been just the two of them since Sarah, the love of his life, passed away after a tragic car accident. He was still heartbroken because of it, and she was constantly on his mind, day after day. So after some time of mourning, John returned to work and Emily went back to school. At first, John thought that he had made the right choice. Emily seemed to be having fun at school, and their psychologist also thought that school would be a good distraction for her. Everything seemed to be going great, really. But then, this one morning, Emily told her dad that she'd be seeing mommy at school. After dropping her off at school, John immediately requested a meeting with their psychologist, and luckily, she was available for a telephone appointment later that same day. John told Dr. Harper what Emily had said earlier that day, and she explained to him that it was perfectly normal for children to say those kinds of things after losing someone close to them. Now, immediately, John felt the relief wash through him. There was no need for him to be worried. So, when he picked Emily up from school that afternoon, he simply smiled when she told him that she had seen seen mom again. She didn't dwell on it long, and she quickly continued to excitedly tell him about all the things she had done in school. John was glad that he had spoken to Dr. Harper about this, and he wasn't worried anymore. But this would soon change. Over the next few days, Emily continued to tell her father about seeing Mommy at school. She told him, Mommy gave me a cookie today. Before he even realized what he was saying, he asked her, well, what kind of cookie was it? It was a chocolate chip cookie. My favorite, she replied with a happy smile. Went to John's worries. Momentarily allayed by Emily's cheerful demeanor and their shared memories of Sarah, surged anew with a peculiar detail a simple smudge on Emily's shirt. Mitch, as the evening's calm shattered under the weight of Emily's words, John stood on the precipice of a truth that promised to unravel the fabric of their lives. John decided that the next morning, he was going to go into the school with her and tend talk to her teacher. He needed to know if she was telling the truth or just making it up. How else would that stain get on her shirt? Ms. Laura, do you have a moment? Please, John asked Emily's teacher as he dropped her off at school the next day. She joined him just outside the classroom as the other pupils were arriving, and John started. Emily had been saying some strange things at home. She's probably just making it up, but I wanted to be sure you know. Miss Laura's curiosity peaked at John's hesitant confession. Yet, compelled by a mix of concern and commitment, he shared the unsettling claim Emily had been seeing Sarah at school despite Sarah's mysterious absence. Glancing towards Emily, lost in conversation, John nearly dismissed the claim with a laugh, ready to chalk it up to a child's vivid imagination. However, the sight of Ms. Laura's shocked expression halted him. Her request, voiced with a calm urgency to continue their discussion in private, hinted at layers of untold stories and truths lurking beneath the surface of John's simple observation. In her office, Ms. Laura shared with John that a woman, Ms. Laura nodded, mentioning that other teachers and a few parents had also noticed the woman. As John left Miss Laura's office, the image of Sarah, or someone remarkably like her, haunted him. He couldn't shake the eerie feeling that accompanied the thought of his late wife's doppelganger so near to Emily. John began his investigation in earnest, turning the house upside down, searching through old photo albums and Sarah's personal effects for any clue that might explain the mysterious woman's identity. He studied each picture, looking for something he might have missed before, a detail that could shed light on the situation. John reached out to Sarah's family. He made phone calls and sent messages, asking if they knew anything or anyone that could explain the woman's striking resemblance to Sarah. And most were puzzled, offering condolences and shared confusion but little information. In the heart of a growing storm, Miss Laura's words words were a lighthouse for John's tempest-tossed spirit. The school, now a fortress of watchful eyes, pledged an unwavering commitment to safeguard Emily from the shadows that sought to breach her world. This this solemn vow offered John a flicker of solace, a precious glimmer in the enveloping darkness of his fears. Despite the overwhelming uncertainty, John held on to a thread of hope. He believed that with the school's help, they might finally uncover the truth about the woman. But as the days passed, John found himself wrestling with a growing tide of doubts and fears. What if the woman had a sinister motive? The school became a place of heightened awareness. 
Teachers, staff, and even other parents were on the lookout, all awaiting the mysterious woman's next appearance. John's days became a series of vigils, each moment at the school spent scanning the faces and corners for the elusive woman. On a routine afternoon that promised nothing out of the ordinary, John's path intersected with that of the school's janitor, a man whose silence veiled a sharp observance. Amidst the backdrop of their burgeoning dialogue, the janitor unveiled a discovery that sent ripples through the calm of John's world a locket, found in solitude, yet screaming of connections untold. This locket, unearthed near the ghostly appearances of the mysterious woman, held an air of haunting familiarity, striking a chord deep within John. As the janitor recounted the woman's habits, each detail resonated with John, kindling a storm of speculation and memories. As John turned the locket over in his hands, he couldn't help but would wonder about the connection between Sarah and the mysterious woman. John spent more time with the janitor, seeking to understand every detail of the woman's behavior and visits. The janitor recalled her distant demeanor, how she watched Emily with an intensity that was hard to decipher. Desperation drove John to Sarah's parents' doorstep, seeking answers only they might provide. He rehearsed his questions, each one a delicate probe into a past they rarely discussed. As he broached the subject of the mysterious woman in the locket, their faces closed off, a barricade of old pain and secrets rising between them. Despite their initial resistance, as the conversation continued, Sarah's parents began to drop veiled hints of a deep family secret intricately tied to Sarah's life. His insistence was a gentle but firm demand for the truth that lay buried in their reluctance. Finally, the dam broke. Sarah's parents, overcome by John's earnest pleas, began to unveil the tangled web of their daughter's past. They spoke of struggles and hidden pains, of decisions made and paths not taken. Amidst the unfolding stories and somber recollections, Sarah's parents revealed a startling truth Sarah had a twin sister, estranged and long gone from their lives. The revelation hit John like a thunderclap. Could a twin, an identical mirror to the woman he loved, lost in the world somewhere? How could Sarah never have mentioned her? The implications were overwhelming, each thought leading to a labyrinth of questions, doubts, and a deep sense of betrayal. Once the initial shock subsided, John's resolve hardened. He needed to find this twin sister to understand her role in Emily's life and the reason behind her estrangement. He started with Sarah's parents, gathering any scrap of information they had old addresses, possible acquaintances, anything that might lead him to her. Each piece of information was a potential clue on the trail to find the woman who could be the key to solving the mystery. As the search for Sarah's twin sister continued, John found himself coming to terms with the startling possibility Emily might have been seeing her aunt, not her mother. As John's search intensified, a neighbor near the school approached him with information. She had noticed the woman resembling Sarah and, knowing John's situation, had kept a discreet watch. With the new information, John tracked down the mysterious woman. His heart pounded with a mix of dread and anticipation as he arranged to meet her. When she finally appeared, her recent return was an attempt to reconnect, to find some closure, and to see the niece she'd never known. Hesitantly, John introduced Emily to the woman. The moment their eyes met, a silent, unexplainable connection sparked. Emily's initial confusion softened into curiosity and a budding sense of kinship. As they talked, a new bond began to form tentative and fragile but real. The woman's presence brought a mix of emotions for Emily, a blend of the unfamiliar and the inexplicably familiar. In the days that followed, John, Emily, and Sarah's twin visited Sarah's grave together. Which, standing side by side, they shared memories, tears, and a quiet hope for the future. It was a beginning, a first step toward healing and understanding. As they left the locket with Sarah, a symbol of their united family, they walked away hand in hand, ready to face a new chapter together, their bonds strengthened by the past and hopeful for the future.